William Patterson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. The NBA trade deadline just ended yesterday, and the NBA is completely flipped on its head. Here to break it all down is Najee, Mikey, Emmanuel, and Fritz. You know, Fritz, the Brooklyn Nets went from, about a week ago since we were here last week, went from a championship contender to, well, maybe the biggest appointment ever, talking about the Kyrie Irving to the Mavs trade. Yeah, that was one of the first blockbuster trades of the trade deadline. We have Kyrie Irving going to the Mavericks for Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, and a couple of first-round picks. Personally, I think that the Mavericks lost this trade. I mean, you gave away your two best defenders. I mean, in the short term, it does look good, right? But when you look at the other trades that happened in the West, I don't think that adding Kyrie Irving to the Mavericks as currently constructed makes them a championship contender. If you look... They gave away two of their best defenders for someone that can't leave them in free agency. I mean, Dallas was never listed as one of Kyrie's landing spots. It was always either the Lakers or the Clippers, you know, going somewhere else. But the Mavericks were never a market that he seemed interested in. So I do think that he's going to leave them in free agency. Yeah, definitely an interesting move. Naiji, who do you think won this trade? Nobody. The Mavs didn't do nothing because the Mavs, Mavs going to be the same Mavs team, get, get back in the first round, in the Nets. Is they they, they gonna they gonna mess with the picks already? They almost made the finals last year. The Mavs. Yeah. They gonna get kicked out in the second round. The, the West is the West is too bad. But the real winners of this trade is the New York Knicks. You know why? Because KD should have came to the Knicks. Kyrie should have came to the Knicks. It would it would not have been a problem if they came to the Knicks, right or wrong. I'm just saying. I digress. The Knicks win this trade. Well, the Mavs lost and the Nets lost. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you next. I'm gonna tell you next question too. Well, we'll never quite know the answer to that question. Emmanuel, what do you think of the, the Nets deal? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Dallas Mavericks as the winner of this trade. You know, whenever you lose a player of Kyrie Irving's caliber, you need to make sure that you get your monies back equally, and I don't believe that they've done that with this trade. DFS is great, great defender. Dinwiddie back to Brooklyn is great, but he's no Kyrie Irving. I think we know that. You need that offensive star to carry you down the stretch, and Brooklyn don't have either of those guys now. Mikey? Until the next trade that happened, I thought... The Nets were doing pretty good after the trade. Now, everything's a little awry. But I got to say, with Dallas, they need to do this. It's a desperation move, but they need to do it because they've never had a second superstar, even when they had Dirk, and they need a second scorer that can carry the load. Yeah, definitely someone to help out Kai, excuse me, help out Luka Doncic when he goes to that bench, maybe get some rest, someone who can carry the offense as well. Emmanuel, the Nets getting rid of everybody. Yep. It didn't stop at Kyrie Irving. Yep. Kevin Durant is gone, too. It's a barren landscape yep. in Brooklyn. So what happened with KD with the Suns? Yeah, the second major trade involving the Brooklyn Nets this past week. The Nets will receive Michael, Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, and four first-round picks. The Suns will receive Kevin Durant and TJ Warren. And again, I'm going to continue with the narrative that the Brooklyn Nets lost this trade. You know, for me... KD getting traded from Brooklyn has been foreshadowing itself since the past summer, but this was not the trade that they expected. For me, it's baffling how neither Chris Paul nor DeAndre Ayton nor Devin Booker have not been announced as Nets players right now. Yes, they get a lot of picks, but that's not what a team that's trying to contend right now is focused on. So, And it seems like the team has a whole new identity now, so yeah. Fritz? So I think the Suns won this in short term, but the Nets did get a good amount of players in return. I mean, look, they have Mikel Bridges, a solid 3 and D defender, who's starting to find his um, scoring stride recently. Cam Johnson is a high, solid energy player. I feel as though that the trade would have looked different if KD requested it before Kyrie did. But, you know, just the way that the dominoes fell, I feel as though this was more of a desperation move. The Nets were just trying to get all that they can get at this point in the trade deadline. So, yeah, I think the Suns win this in the short term, adding Kevin Durant, arguably one of the greatest scorers ever. But, yeah, it can go either way. Yeah, the Suns definitely become an instant uh, title contender if they were not already. Definitely the favorites in the West now. Najee, quickly, what do you think yeah, about this? Yeah, I feel like the Suns won this trade. They kept they kept, they, they kept their core pieces, Chris Paul, Booker, Aiden. And the Nets really, they traded, they, they traded for three small forwards, basically. And one went to Milwaukee. So the Nets really, at this point, if you're going to trade KD to the Phoenix Suns, you should trade Kyrie to the, to the Lakers for more picks. If you're going to go for the pick route, that's what I'm going to get with. Mikey? The Nets had to do this trade just because of the Kyrie move um, because KD was already questionable at that point. It's not the return you really want for someone like KD. And the Suns, they got their third guy, and he's really their number one now. And you get a number one when you have two good guys, there's no shot that they're not going to be contending in the West. 
Yeah, Sun's definitely the odds-on favorite now. Don't necessarily know if a ring helps KD's legacy now. Just go to another super team where you're not really the focal point. It's probably still Devin Booker and Chris Paul's team for sure. But keeping things in the West, going over to the Lakers, they made a move. Russell Westbrook is gone. Mikey, take us through this one. Well, so the big pieces in this trade are three point guards that moved. Uh, the Lakers, though, they gained a lot from it, getting D'Lo, Jared Vanderbilt, and Malik Beasley, all going to be key contributors in them making a playoff run. But for the Timberwolves, I like Mike Conley. He's a better point guard for their system and what they want to do. Um, and then for the Jazz, they're blowing it up. They want to get assets, so that's yeah, what they need. Definitely an interesting move. Russell Westbrook fought with Darvin Ham not that long ago, before the day before the trade, actually. Fritz, take us through this one. Yeah, I feel like the Lakers absolutely finesse with this one. I mean, it kind of reminds me of the 2018 Cavs deadline when they completely blew up the team and made a good run to eventually making the finals, although they did lose. They get shooting, floor spacing, a young, talented wing defender and Jared Vanderbilt. I feel as though that the front office made one of their best moves that they have made in about three years, you know, so I feel like they can make a run. They're only four games back of being in the playoffs, so I think they can get to the playoffs. I don't know about a ring, but definitely can make it to playoffs. Amanda, what do you think? Yeah, I don't compliment the Lakers on doing anything well at all, but <laughs> they've gotten themselves a great trade window so far. Um, I like the acquisitions of Malik Beasley and D'Lo. Um, if they continue to do well and everyone plays well, they may, they just might lose in five in the first round instead of getting swept entirely. Well, definitely going to be making a push for the play in this time. I definitely give them a better chance now. Uh, definitely get more spacing. Najee, quickly, what are your thoughts on this deal? Um, Lakers, hey, like I said, Lakers for us at the end of the day. They got, they got, young, they got younger players defensive players and they got a person who a point guard who could space the floor and now they got three playmakers on the on the team who could you could rotate in as Dennis Schroeder, LeBron James and D'Lo. So that's it's like that's a great pickup. They now now they have more like I say they and also another pickup they had they added was Mo Bamba. Yeah, he's not how he how he wanted to be, but he's a nice def, def piece. Yeah, definitely a nice depth piece. They got rid of Thomas Bryant. Lakers were very active, finally trying to get LeBron a little bit more help. Russell Westbrook was clearly not working. But something that is working for LeBron, his scoring. He's passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the NBA's all-time leading scorer. Najee, I know you're a big LeBron supporter. What do you think about this going on? Uh, before we even talk, that go James right there. LeBron, you see right now, his total points and counting is 38,390 points. And he got four MVPs. And my thought... Let's make that five NBA champions because he won't win his fifth one this season. I'm already calling it. But what I, happened to the Knicks winning the championship? After LeBron, after, after we just see what LeBron just did, we, we need, it's, it's, it's a better storyline. LeBron mm. in the 20th LeBron. year, 38 years old, another title. But at the end of the day, the Gold Bay is already done. It was done. It was done two years ago. So right now, him by, by him by passing Kareem is already cemented. Is set in stone that LeBron is the greatest of all time. And I ho hopefully any MJ fans, my, my fault, Jimmy, I know, you're, I know you're an MJ fan, should not even come close to saying stats. Because if you want to talk about stats, Bill Russell better than Michael Jordan. If you, if you want to, if you, if you, if you say his stats, I, no, no not, not in my opinion, I say about stats, Bill Russell better than Michael Jordan, right or wrong. If, no. you, if, you pull up, if, yeah. pull up, if you don't pull up rings, Bill Russell better than Michael Jordan, right or wrong. If we're talking about oh championship numbers, yeah, yeah. but not stats. But I'm just saying. Point per game, LeBron, Three behind Michael. Nine all defensive teams for Michael. Five for LeBron. Michael is number four on the all time scoring That's, list. In, it, it doesn't matter. He didn't play as many LeBron years. LeBron is number the four. The games matter. LeBron is 30 fourth. points a game, 27 Le, a game. LeBron is fourth on the all time assist. On, on top LeBron. Top. He never won and four. And he never, and he like, LeBron I think, I think he never six on three points. Six in the finals. Michael, six and out. Yo, you see, you see Michael's team, you see Michael final opponents versus LeBron final? You tell, you tell me. You tell Seven all-star teammates, one all-star teammate. All right, Fritz, oh, Fritz man, you guys want to jump in a little bit quickly here? All right, personally, I feel as though anybody that has Jordan as their GOAT or even nostalgic fanboys or old heads that think defense is throwing elbows. I, I, the, the GOAT debate is over. It's been over. It's LeBron James, our glorious king. There's no, there's nobody that comes close at this point. It's over with. Emmanuel, quickly. Yeah, for me. LeBron's been the GOAT for a few years now. When you talk about a player who can do anything, LeBron's the closest version to that in the sport of basketball. And with his most recent game against the Thunder, he established himself as the greatest basketball player of all time. The name is eventually, the name from now on is GOAT James. When, when, we, speak, when, when we speak about LeBron James on this, bro, on this block, <laughs> It's GOAT James. Right. It's well, no more. 30 for 30? Right. Yeah, it's going to be GOAT James. It's going to be labeled GOAT James. It's still Michael. 
All right, well, Ooh. I guess I'm an old head because I'm still going with Jordan 1. LeBron 2 is not disrespectful. <sighs> no, no disrespect. Six NBA championships. You have a no, Jordan no, no, no games. Four. Never lost. No, we no, talk, we talk no about game, championships. No Scotty Pippen, that's it. We say championships. Hey, AD, Bill Dwayne Russell Wade. Have 11. AD, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh. Uh, Scotty was better than legit. They don't tell me Scotty was better than Dwayne Wade. He, there is no hey, way Scotty was better than Dwayne Wade. We could debate that. We could debate that. Anthony Davis is better than him. Okay, that's what? okay. Okay, so, okay. Mm, now, no, now, no, now you're caught. Mike, we Mikey, can, Mikey, come on, Mikey. We can resume. No, bro. Come on, Mikey. Fellas, right. we can resume the Jordan, LeBron, or even Scotty Pippen, Anthony Davis next week. That should be a lot of fun. But from the hardwood to the gridiron, the Super Bowl is upon us. Mark and the NFL crew will break it all down here on WPTV.